and welcome to another video on the Casio XWP1 synthesizer and today we are still doing step sequencing but we are adding in arpeggios and phrase sequences so that uh, we can make even much more complex uh, step sequences now the first two videos it took two videos believe it or not to make even the simplest step sequence but we can go much, much, much deeper. So today we're gonna, gonna show you a few things about arpeggio. Now most people are familiar with arpeggios and uh, I got a sound here. And whatever sounds on the keyboard, that's what's gonna play on the arpeggio. So if I press arpeggio and play any key on the any chord on the keyboard we get arpeggios now if you hold the arpeggio button down you can then pick out what arpeggio you want or change it while it is running set is combining the arpeggio with the phrase sequencer. Now the arpeggio, arpeggios can be, uh, you can play more than one chord of course. So they're fun because you can uh, add chord changes to it. And if you have the key shift set up, your chord changes can be in time with your, or in uh, key or pitch with your step sequence. So here I got a step sequence with uh, So let's play it together here. simply playing a chord and the key shift note on the far left here at the same time. Now, uh, hopefully everybody's familiar with phrase sequences. I, uh, I think I've already given a video on that. So I've got, I recorded in a chord progression on my phrase sequencer. recorded a phrase sequence and the phrase sequence will trigger the arpeggio the chord will trigger the arpeggio just as if you were playing the keyboard so I'm not even playing the keyboard and I can trigger it with I can trigger the arpeggio with the phrase sequencer now I'm not playing the keyboard at all it's just running So the chord, pre chord progression, 
that I recorded in is actually triggering the arpeggio so the arpeggio is moving with it now you can go one step farther by going to key play and actually changing now the chord progression I recorded was all in C major it's just inverted and all and kept moving up the keyboard so if I go to key play I can go out of C major and play any key I want so here's the just a plain phrase sequencer changing key with key play Now it's going to go through the chord progression of uh, E flat major. So now we can go even one step farther by putting the step sequencer in there using the key shift of the step sequencer and playing just one note. I'm going to play like one C with my left hand and one C with my right hand at the same time and then change key. So we're going to start the step sequencer and I have to start there is no sync to the phrase sequencer I'm afraid you have to hit that on the on the right beat and I'm going to hit that on the right beat here. arpeggio will take off as soon as the phrase sequencer changes chord. Step sequencer is moved in. Now with key play armed and key shift armed, we're going to change key. playing one key with my one left hand and one key with my right hand playing the same key of course and back to C and that's getting about uh, three layers deep on on these so what we did there is we were playing the arpeggiator to the chord sequence of my phrase sequencer and we were manually playing the keyboard with the left and right hand with the key shift of the step sequencer to get chord changes. Okay, and one more. Now you can you can sync the arpeggiator to the step sequencer by holding down the arpeggiator. You bring up the arpeggiator uh, function, and on there you'll see hold on and sync off, or hold and sync. And the step keys here will change those. Right now it says hold on. Now it says hold off. That means the uh, as soon as I release the keys as soon as I release the key the arpeggio stops so what we're going to do with the arpeggio is turn both of these on to sync on and now with the arpeggio turned on as soon as I play the first chord on 
the keyboard, the step sequencer will start. And I was, I'm going to start that in the same key as the step sequencer this time, in the key of C. So all I'm doing is playing a key of C, and it's going to automatically sync and start the step sequencer. So all of there, there's a lot of interaction in here. Now, setting up a phrase sequence, you hold the se phrase sequencer button down. You can see underneath the buttons there's a select and a select. Those are those are meant if you hold the key down till the display changes. Now in a phrase sequencer, I have the loop set on and a hold set on. Those also can be with the step minus keys turned off. And of course, any phrase sequence that, that you put together, this is a user phrase sequence. It's a, it's a custom sequence as, as a, I think most of them are. I'm not sure if there's even any presets. Uh, those have to be saved with the right button while in phrase sequence. They have to be saved. So, You can see how deep this can go as we sync arpeggiators and time in our, our phrase sequence. So I'm at, let's make a new phrase sequence. And I'm going to go up here to an untitled 2-2. And by holding down the record button. Now I'm going, now the phrase sequence has to be done in time too if you're going to play it with your step sequence. It has to be played in time. So the step sequence has to be running. And this time I'm going to record. And during the record you can see that we need the new we need the new. The end quantize is at one measure, which means it's very easy to to uh, loop back around with one measure. You can set that to quarter note or eighth note but I like to use the one measure for a loop uh, you can quantize the so this is the end quantize this is where the uh, no matter what you're doing on the keyboard as soon as you press stop it will immediately go to the end of the measure and then we have note quantize too which can be either off, quarter, triplet, and all of the all of the options that we have on the step sequencer. So with with the recording armed and blinking, as soon as I play my first chord, it will start recording. So I'm gonna play in time to the step sequencer. And turn the arpeggio. Now, by starting the phrase sequence first, hitting the arpeggiator 
it, the arpeggiator will be in time to playing to the uh, phrase sequencer because the phrase sequencer is changing chords in time uh, to the step sequencer. Now, as soon as since the arpeggiator has been set to sync with the step sequencer, by turning the arpeggiator on, it automatically starts the step, step sequencer in time to the arpeggiator. Pretty deep stuff here. Hope you're all getting this. Let's do that one more time. I'm going to start the phrase sequencer, which is just chord progressions that the arpeggiator is going to play of the chord progressions. So as soon as, I, as, soon as the arpeggiator senses a chord being played on the phrase sequencer, it will start. Now we go one step further again by changing keys with key play. Key play will change the key of the phrase sequencer in and in in time and in kind. The arpeggiator will change key with the phrase sequencer, and by using the key shift of the step sequencer and playing one key left and right hand together, it all works together. Here we go. Turn the key play on. I'm going to play left, one key with my left hand, one with my right. I'm going from C to F. With everything synced together, you have to turn it all, everything off to get it to stop. But uh, as you have you seen in my step sequencer video of uh, I think it's number two or three, uh, I went through and and uh, actually changed while in arpeggiator. I'm going to exit out of the phrase, hold down this until arpeggiator lights up. Um, you can, without even playing the keyboard, just manually change the arpeggiators. There's quite a few different ones in there. So let's, uh, I'm going to just step through those as it plays. Now it's going to be, it's going to be playing the chord sequence, the phrase sequence, and I'll start the arpeggiator, then I'm going to change the type of arpeggiator. As you can see, the type of arpeggiator you pick out uh, has to match what you're playing. I mean, there's some different scales in here. And uh, of course, you can make your own arpeggiators too. So that's it for the uh, arpeggiator phrase sequencer, step sequencer, all kind of working together here. And on the next video, we're still going to be in a step sequencer, but I'm going to show you more advanced features. Hello and welcome to 
another video. We're still on the step sequencer. And if you uh, watched the previous video, you'll notice that I was playing a step sequence. If you know music, it was played in a three-fourths time signature. And you might say, well, if you got 16 steps, how can you do three-fourths? Well, watch the sequencer running here. It's going to go only up to the 12th step and then return instead of going to 16. So as you can see, it's only doing the 12 steps. And why is it only doing 12 steps? Well, that can be set in the edit menu. So let's go to the step sequencer, edit, down to track parameters. Now if you haven't seen all, all the videos up to now, you're going to be lost if you start here, most likely. If you're an advanced user, you can start here, but I suggest starting at 1 and moving up if you're a beginner. Otherwise you're going to be pretty much lost. Now as we get into the step sequencer, at the top at the top of the page we have what's called max step and I have it set to 12. It's a 16 step sequencer and I can change it to 16. It won't play correctly now. And this is what it's supposed to sound like in time to 3 fourths time signature. And that's one of the many extra features of this uh, synthesizer is you can change the number of steps. And this is most important, you can change the number of step per track. We have eight tracks to build up a, a sequence. Each one of those tracks can be a different number of steps. Now I've tried this with just a few steps and it works fine. If you had eight different steps on the max step, it may be more than the processor can handle. You can see if you can crash the machine. I haven't crashed it yet, but uh, polyrhythms can, that complex may crash the machine with, because you're going to have uh, eight different steps running off. One might be a 16 step, one might be a 6 step, one might be a 14 step, one would live. You might wonder, why are you doing this? Well, anybody familiar with polyrhythms, which is a really big name today, not a brand name, but something people want their drum machines to do. And that is a matter of having one drum set at 16 steps, and you go to the next drum, and you go to 15 steps. And why would you do that? And that's because... If it one cycles through at 16, one with 15, you get ramden, randomness, and that is pretty cool. So let's do a random one. So let's go to a brand new step sequence. I'm going to go to 3-1, turn this on, and it is blank. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the bongos to, uh, to set my sequence, and also you'll find that... Uh, you don't have to have just kicks and snares that's already been preset up for you. So I'm going to use the part minus to go to my first step, which is 8. And we're going to start the sequencer, and there's nothing there. Now, normally you could just hit your buttons, and it throws a kick in there automatically for you. But I don't want a kick. We're not even we may not even have a kick in here but I'm going to put the kick in here as a metronome or you can later now the trick I showed you before go into draw bar organ I'm going to reset all my sliders down to zero and then back to step sequencer. So we're in a step sequencer, brand new step sequence. Uh, let's see, tempo is going to be, uh, let's go 100 this time. And go to the mixer and 
for step eight. It's on standard set and it's So these five keys are bongos. So this time we're going to actually do a step sequence. Now we're not going to play it in. So out of a mixer, into edit, down to step edit, enter. I'm going to actually press one and then I'm going to play the key I want to play. Press five, nine, thirteen. So there's a, so when I play this now, so we did that with the bongos, but you can do that with any of the keys that are in here. Okay, so that's our that's our channel eight, track eight. That's my sequence. My, eh, that sounds <laughs> doesn't sound very good. Yeah, hold on, we're going to do this three times on three different channels. So let's move up to nine. Now we're on nine. I'm going to do it again, but I'm going to do it on a. Let's see. Let's see, we got to make sure we got our bump. Our uh, okay. Back into step sequence, and this time I'm going to do a two, six, ten, fourteen. Exit out of the step sequence. Now it's going to play those two tracks together, and what's it going to sound like? Now it sounded pretty cool. We're going to go out one more time. We're going to do three tracks with the bongos. So let's go to track 10. And we're going to step sequence that. So back into the step sequencer. This time I'm going to do a do one at the end so we got a nice completion. So we're going to go 4, 8, 12. And you can see I'm playing different keys here. I'm stepping out of that, and now when we play it, now we got a pretty cool rhythm. So let's write that in there. So we're going to write in a 3 1 rhythm. I'm going to step down and I'm going to name it. And press enter and yes to save on 3 1. So we now have a new sequence on 3 1. Now, when we go back to edit, track parameters, and enter, and we go into this first one, we have max step is 16, step size or quantize was on 16th notes, even though we didn't quantize anything, we just played it in and note length of 50% and groove. So let's get this sequence running and see what we could do by just changing our parameters. So now that you've seen the outside, I think um, I'm going to zoom in and uh, I think we'll zoom in on the display so you can see more of what I'm doing here. Let's see, I don't think you need to see anything on the outside after that. Okay, here we are zoomed in on the display, and our, we have our bongo beat, let's go to edit, and track parameters, enter, and for the first thing I want to do is show you that polyrhythm. So what I'm going to do is take channel 10, and we're going to take it from 16 to 15 and I want you to hear it. it's going to put randomness in this bongo as soon as we go to 15 
I could let that run because it's going to take 15 measures, 16 measures for it to come back around to the original one and then it goes back around again. So that means you got 16 measures of different rhythms all by just pressing a button and going from 16 to 15 steps. And of course you can change the rhythm as much as you want. If you go on even steps it will it uh, it will not be random but it will be a different beat so let's go from six here's our 16 step let's go down to an eight step and hear the difference you have to listen very carefully because in these even steps it isn't going to change a whole lot back to the original. But that's polyrhythms. And you can we change it on 10 by going to track 9 or actually track 8 is right on the beat. That's that's a one bongo hit for every quarter note. So let's see what happens when we change this beat. Now let's take it down to 15 steps. And back to the original pattern. Let's go down three steps. And that is a way, this is, this is done with drum beats, you can do this randomly with an actually a pitched instrument. So let's use this all in time and let's add another track. Let's add another track that is a pitched instrument. This time we'll do two tracks and we'll polyrhythm one of them. So what do we got to go to the mixer to find out what we got. Let's go to tone synth and we'll just take the first one that comes along. And we'll just go ahead and track 11. Let's go to track 12 and do a different synth. And we're on track 12. Go to the mixer, synth. Yeah, we'll get something completely different sounding so you can hear what's going on. Exit out of this and I'll step sequence in right on the quarter beat. So now when it plays well, don't like, can't really hear that. So let's let's pick another voice while it's running. Now you can hear that that one that's right on beat every quarter note. That's that one. It's just that blip, 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 blip. So let's get out of the mixer and do a polyrhythm on this number 12. We're going to 
edit, track parameters, we're going to change the step length of number 12. on those two synths. And while I was doing that, I, I enabled the key shift. So let's see what this sounds like. Since we got pitched instruments, let's see what it sounds like as we change the pit, as we uh, key shift. just some fun. Let's go back to edit, track parameters, max step. Let's do a, do a polyrhythm on both those. Now we already did a polyrhythm on the synth sound. Let's go back to our bongos and take it from 16 to 15. Now we have polyrhythms on the bongos and so now it's just a random, completely random and might be a mess. Let's see what it sounds like. So it does sound way too random, right? Well, let's uh, let's put another track in there that's got a nice solid beat. Let's see, we got 13 is open. Let's go to 13. Choose a another drum. This time we're going to just step in. We'll let everybody know this is a 4 4 beat and put the kick in there. we got one solid 4-4 four, four speed going through there and I'm gonna go just in case uh, I do something wrong I'm going to write this I don't have to start this whole thing over okay so now we got one strong 4-4 four, four speed in the midst of all the randomness Now let's let's get those two synthesizers working together here. So we got we got eleven and thirteen. So let's uh, eleven has got. Let's see what uh, tone is on there. It's a pluck lead number forty one. So let's put that same one on twelve. This way they can work together. And yeah, let's see what that sounds like. Mm -hmm. 